So I am here once again with another tutorial and this time we will be setting up Mozilla Thunderbird and email client. It's kind of like Microsoft Outlook except it's better. There's a difference between Outlook Exchange or Outlook Express and Microsoft Outlook and Windows Mail is now called Microsoft or is the new version of Outlook Express. But it still sucks, trust me. So, Thunderbird, why would you use Thunderbird? It, well, with your Bronco Mail, or like if you have like multiple email accounts, you can have them all come into the same program, so you need to log in to like five different sites to view them. It just makes everything much more simple. Alright, so to get there, you can either just Google Thunderbird or you just go to mozillamessaging.com. and then you click download Thunderbird assuming we're on Windows and we wait for it to start downloading start desktop save and the little Thunderbird is made by the same people that make Firefox so if you like Firefox, you'll probably like Mozilla Thunderbird. Thunderbird is open source and it is on Macintosh, Linux, and Windows. Although the setup process for different operating systems are considerably different. Namely, Linux is a serious pain he has to set up and I don't know how hard it is to set up on a Mac because I really severely dislike Apple. Ooh, we are hitting some major lag. Okay, hurry up and scan. Alright. So we open this up. Wait for it to do something. We click run. And we can axe that window. I am going to be setting this up using Gmail accounts and I will also do one Hotmail account um, if you have Yahoo, Yahoo unless you pay for it does not support this another reason why Yahoo Mail totally sucks um, you can also have RSS feeds in Thunderbird but I kinda find that useless but whatever you like to use and you know what I would like? I would like this program to hurry up and open Okay, so we have Thunderbird open here now. We can go next. You just do standard. You let Thunderbird be your default mail program. And then you install Thunderbird. And I'm going to pause this because this just might take a while because recording really slows my computer down. And we're going to be done in a matter of seconds. That was only like five second pause. <laughs> Alright, the one thing I love about Thunderbird is it makes it really easy to set stuff up. Just clear that out of the way. Alright, so this is the first window you will hit on Thunderbird, hopefully. This is version 3.1.4. In future versions, this might not even apply, so... I don't use Outlook Express. I definitely don't use Outlook. I think it breaks on me like crazy. I just don't import anything. Thunderbird makes it really easy to set stuff up. Right, so it gives you this little window right here, mail count setup. This is really easy. Alright, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my professional Gmail. Alright, I'm gonna put you down for a sec. And I'm going to pan out of the way because I'm not that big on giving up my name. Alright, so what you do is you put your name in here and you put your email address. Um, you can't use Yahoo. I know you can't use Yahoo. It's Yahoo is stupid. Just don't use Yahoo. If you're thinking about getting one, don't. Uh, and then you just put your password in. If you want it to automatically um, fetch your emails for you, you check this box. I um, on my personal email, I never leave this checked. That way, if someone comes and like jacks my computer they don't have access to my email 
but this is my professional so I'll just leave it with the password on. I hit continue and it checks stuff for me and it already knows all the settings needed to set this up. So we create the account and it will check my oh and if it asks for pop or imap always use imap. It keeps everything in sync with like gmail and stuff. Alright so Welcome to Thunderbird. It's synchronizing to the server right now. 264 messages. And now, oh, not that one. Okay, and then it downloads the message. You can tweak all the settings for it, like, like download all of it for you so it makes it faster. Check out these jobs, and then you have all that. All right, so to make another account, we go into account settings under tools. We go down to account actions right here, and we add add mail account. All right, I'm going to do my Bronco mail now. This one takes a little bit more setup because it isn't configured to know how to do Bronco mail, but it's still pretty easy. Oh, what the hell? I'm too tired of panning around this thing. Who cares? All right, and then you put your password in. You might not have a password set for this. It's not the same as your Bronco Mail password. So you have to go to broncomail.u.boisestate.edu, and it's probably going to kick me right into my email. No, it's not actually. All right, so they give you this horrendous font which I should really tell them to change because this is ugly and you go to set your Google password and you log into your Bronco web and it asks you to have a password this is going to be separate than your login password through Bronco Mail this is actually as if you had a Gmail account you just have to have this it never expires so don't worry Yeah, screw it. All right, so I put my password in. It can do this much easier if you just put your password in, even if you don't hit check or remember password. All right, it'll fail. I can guarantee this. Ha! Just kidding. Apparently, it knows how to do this. All right, so I guess it's even easier than it used to be because I started on 3.0, now it's on 3.14. So wait, create account. I have the wrong password. And ta-da! I have a new folder appearing. And it should be synchronizing it. And now I have all my emails. The only thing that you will not be able to get, I think, is your contacts list. But I will look into an add-on that can pull my contacts list. All right. And another one, another piece of thing on Thunderbird that I like before I go into my Hotmail is I'll go to Tools, Add-ons. These are the add same kind of add-ons you get for Firefox. Oh, look right here, Add Block Plus. If you get advertisements in your email, click Add to Thunderbird. This is really nice because it'll block them from even loading, so it speeds up your emails. All right, and then you go install now. Installing. Uh, another cool one is Foxy Tunes. I'll add that too. This can add like a little signature saying, oh, I'm playing this right now to my email. It's kind of nice. It's got a little personal touch. Thunder Browse, that's kind of useful. I occasionally use it, but I probably won't install it this time. Um, it allows you to use like this pane right here as a web browser so if you find a link you can just click it without having to open your web browser but it doesn't support cookies so you can't log into anything eh that's just how it is alright so I'm not going to restart it yet so I'm going to go to tools account settings I am not sure if it knows how to uh, set up hotmail We'll go to add mail account and I'll do this again. I 
never use this email. It should be. Yep. Yeah, wow, it actually. No, wow, these are much nicer than I remember it ever being. Remember, I used to have to manually set this crap up, and it sucked. And then just hit create account. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Ta-da! Then I go to an add another mail account, and I have another one even. IMAP syncs, if you're wondering what IMAP is, it syncs everything between the server and you, so if I go to like Gmail, or uh, Hotmail doesn't support uh, IMAP. Gmail supports IMAP and POP. POP allows you to download messages that haven't been marked as read, so unread messages, and it always downloads them and saves them on the local machine, so even if you're disconnected from the internet, you can view them. IMAP, on the other hand, is most most times when you first set it up, it makes it so everything's stored on the server unless you click on a message, and it'll download it to your machine, so it's not as, like, nice if you don't have constant internet access. But if you open a message on your local machine, it will mark on the server that it has been read. And you can download unread messages, and it's just so much better than Pop is. So we'll create an account. And password okay. All right, so we go down to our outgoing server, which means SMTP. It's simple mail transfer protocol, I believe. Um, by default, it already sets that. All right, so say I want to send an email. Open up, open up. Let's see who do I want to send it from and to. I'll send an email from my old email to my less older email that I still don't use. So I go right. And you don't see any emails in this inbox right now because everything's been marked as red. Because I'm cool like that. Alright, so I'll set an email to... And then make sure you check this f from box. I can change who I'm sending it from. Oh, mgamers at msn.com Video! And more video. And we're looking it up. And we're connected. And we're delivered. And we've been sent successfully. Alright, and then we go down to Inbox and MSN, and we'll get mail. Host contacted. Downloading messages. Oh, apparently it is downloading everything. This is my spam email, so there's going to be a lot of spam messages. I guess it just downloads the entire inbox. That's weird. I don't normally see it do that. Downloading messages. So I'm going to pause this. This is going to take a while. Uh-oh. Avast is finding a secure connection. I'll have to show you how to fix that if you're using Avast. And I will have to be back because this video is going to run too long. So I will continue this in a moment.